Are you looking to learn how the get metadata activity works in Microsoft Fabric data pipelines? That is going to be the topic of today's video. Welcome to the video. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Microsoft Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Microsoft Fabric data engineering. And in this video we are going to cover the get metadata activity in data pipelines. This video is also part of my Microsoft Fabric data engineering series. A link to the playlist can be found in the description below. Also, it is good to keep in mind that videos in this series build concepts on top of the concepts covered in previous videos. But now let's talk about the get metadata activity that is one of the most essential activities to learn since it will allow you to fetch metadata about datasets and folders in data stores and use that metadata as part of your data pipeline processing logic. In this video, I will first cover how the get metadata activity works on conceptual level, and then we will have a demo slash tutorial and use the get metadata activity in data pipeline in Marks Fabric. Let's get started. Let's imagine a situation where we have a lake house. In that lake house, we have a CSV file. Then we have a fabric data pipeline. In that pipeline, we have a copy data activity that would copy the contents of this CSV file. However, we have wrapped this copy data activity in an if condition, and we would only like to run this copy activity if the CSV file has been modified during the past 24 hours. How we would do this? Of course, we can use the get metadata activity in the data pipeline and fetch the last modified timestamp of the CSV file. And then we have the logic in our if condition to only run the copy activity if the CSV file has been modified in the last 24 hours. Now let's digest this get metadata activity in a bit more detail. Here we can see how the get metadata activity looks in the UI. This is an activity that retrieves some metadata information about the data set. There are several different types of metadata that are currently supported depending on the source of the data set. The maximum size of output for this activity is 4 megabytes. The output of this activity can be used in the following activities as dynamic content. Content. This activity is somewhat similar to the lookup activity that we covered in the previous video in this series. Now let's take a look at a couple of these options and the kinds of outputs they would yield in data pipelines. Let's have a lake house. In that lake house, let's have a CSV file and call that file1.csv. Then we're going to have a get metadata activity in our data pipeline. First, let's set the option of the get metadata activity to last modified. Now when our get metadata activity runs, we can see that it will output the last modified timestamp of that file. Next, let's change our get metadata activities option to exists and run our get metadata activity again. Now we can see that our return value is a boolean value. And it is now true since our file is there and exists. If our file didn't exist, the get metadata activity wouldn't throw an error but would return false. Lastly, let's set our option to structure and see what kind of output our get metadata activity would now yield when it runs. We can see that after it runs, we get the structure array in the output. And it has all the columns and their data tabs that we would have in the CSV file. Like the lookup activity, the outputs of the get metadata activity would be now available to be used in the following activities as input and dynamic content. This would allow us to build some extra logic into our pipelines based on the get metadata activities outputs. Now let's hop into Fabric and let's do a demo slash tutorial that will help you to see and learn how the get metadata activity works in action. Also, all the files used in the tutorial can be found by clicking the link in the description. But before we open Fabric, I would like you to know that I spent a ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Marks Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's go to Fabric. Let's first open my lake house where I have created a new folder called Fabric DE Series 11 and added one file to that folder called movilsfile.csv. In that file I have a header and few rows of data. Next I would like to use this file as an example to demonstrate how the get metadata activity works in data pipelines. Let's hit create and find 
data pipeline and create a new data pipeline and name it according to our naming conventions. Then we want to start with a blank canvas and just to add one activity to that pipeline, that is going to be of course the get metadata activity. Next, let's open up the settings tab of our get metadata activity and choose our lake house as the connection for it. Then we want to use files as our root folder and make sure that our directory and file are pointing to that file that we want to use in this demo. And since we are going to have a CSV file, we can change our file type to delimited text. That will give us possibilities to fetch more metadata out from the file compared to a situation where this was just a binary file. Next, we can configure our field list that de determines which metadata is fetched from the file. As we can see from the available list, we have plenty of different options available here. We can for example fetch the column code from the file, check if the file exists, get the last modified timestamp or to check the size of the file. From this argument list, let's pick the exist metadata and then last modified and lastly, let's get the structure of the file. Now we have configured our get metadata activity and are ready to run our pipeline. Let's click run, which will then start a pipeline run that will execute our get metadata activity. Now our pipeline run has completed and we can check what kind of outputs the get metadata had. We can see that we have their execution duration and then we have those three metadata properties that we configured our activity to fetch from our file. First we have a property called exists that has a boolean true as its value. The property tells that whether or not the file exists and since our file is in our lakehouse folder it returned true. Then we have the last modified timestamp of our file. This is now basically the timestamp when I uploaded that file to that folder. Then lastly we have the structure information of our file that tells which columns can be found in that file. Next let's modify our pipeline a bit and add if condition after our get metadata activity. To this if conditions expression we want to use the output of our get metadata activity. When we open up the expression builder we can see those get metadata outputs there. One of the easiest outputs to use here is the exist information, since our if condition is expecting to have a boolean value as a result of our expression. So we can select that exists information from our output list, which will then create the required expression. By using this expression we would go to the true branch of our if condition if the file exists, and to the false branch if the file does not exist. For demo purposes, we can add wait activities inside our branches and name them according to the branch, so we can see in the pipeline output to which branch the execution went. Then we can run our pipeline and wait it to finish the execution. Now our pipeline is done and we can see that our if condition went to the true branch since our file can be found in our lakehouse. For example, now we could have a copy data activity in our true branch and copy the file to our lakehouse table. I hope you now have an idea how the get metadata activity works and what kind of outputs it provides and how you could use those outputs in the following activities as dynamic content. If you want to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.